We have the good fortune to be speaking today with Trip Taylor. Uh, Trip, uh, you and I had the, our, our first R9 mutual experience at just following Oshkosh two years ago. We had a brand new installation. It literally got done the day before Oshkosh started. Everybody uh, beat their feet to go over and take a look at uh, our airplane with the R9 installation. We were very excited, but the first chance I had to fly it was when you and I stepped into it, started up, and headed home. And over the course of a flight from Oshkosh to where I dropped you off in the Carolinas and from there on out, I headed home, stopped in Hilton Head, South Carolina that night, actually showed a shot and approach to just above minimums without a care in the world. So you're the current Zen master in R9. Uh, what I'd like to do is right now just spend a little bit of time with what you've learned from the system. And I, I guess you've got about a, about a thousand hours in it now? That's correct. Yeah, um, I want a couple of the things that are interesting and some of the things that have evolved in um, uh, the work with R9 that I've done is that one of the things I hear is people say it's a simple system. And I've started saying, no, that's not in fact the case. It's not a simple system, but what it is is an intuitive system. And that allowed you to make that flight from Oshkosh to Hilton Head and fly an approach in uh, a relatively short period of time behind the system. Yet it's so powerful that there are features that I'm sure in that flight you didn't use or didn't have a need to use, but they're there for the pilot who is willing to dig just a little bit deeper. Um, and so uh, Avidine, I'm sure, appreciates no, you know, knowing that people find the system simple to use. But what the real power is, is the user, as they become more familiar with, can add to their repertoire and add to um, the abilities, their abilities, and uh, get more utility out of the system. There's a couple of features that I think are, they're small features, but I think they're real um, hallmarks of what makes this system intuitive, simple, and powerful. And a couple of those examples are the hot key to bring up the approach plates. You need to load an approach. As soon as you load the approach, you have an option to display the chart without going to another screen. It just makes the workload so much better for the pilot. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidine's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Another idea is all frequencies in the VHF band start with a 1. Why should we have to push a 1? We don't. With R9, we can simply push digits of the frequencies that are pertinent and uh, display that frequency and tune that frequency. Another option that the R9 user has is uh, ability to monitor with the audio panel a second frequency in the background. So we can monitor two frequencies and be, have two active frequencies. And that really helps in the busy airspace that we have today. We can be legal by listening to the guard frequency. We can be picking up ATIS. We can be aware of the CTAF frequency and still have approach up and, and do that all in a fairly balanced way. So that, that helps a lot. The other options that R9 has for the more advanced user is the ability to paste in airport IDs and get a lot of data like sunset, sunrise, the TAFs, METARs, and winds aloft, temperatures, icing forecasts. Those sort of things are available in one or two button pushes, something that was not available in a quick, easy-to-access workflow in the previous systems. R9 also has the ability to uh, load multiple destinations with multiple procedures. So if we're flying someplace that has um, uh, maybe the potential of uh, an approach down to minimums and say you were on your way to Hilton Head and you couldn't make it in that day, well, we could load an approach into Savannah and have a backup and already be ready to fly that before we attempted the first approach. Just a seamless integration from one approach to the other. Trip with, with uh, I've got probably about 250 hours now on uh, my R9 system and the thing that I'm enjoying more about it than anything else is that there's still much to learn about it. With simplicity comes capability and with capability at that point becomes freedom to do things in ways you didn't imagine previously. What are the things that you're taking away from your first thousand hours with R9? What is this really meant to your flying and more important to the way you teach single pilot IFR? Well, um, interestingly enough, um, I find that the single pilot IFR was probably the focus of the development of R9, and yet most of us who fly 
um, spend a fair amount of time outside of the clouds, and we can do some VFR flying. And what has happened for me personally is I've been able to fly a lot more VFR a lot more comfortably and really get a lot of utility out of the system. So while it's great for the, the uh, high workload, heavy IFR work, it's actually added to my enjoyment of flying from the VFR world with all the different tools that it makes available to the pilot. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. What is going to be the DFC 100's greatest contribution to the R9 uh, mythos at this point? Well, I think the the thing that comes to the mind right away about the DFC 100 and coupling that with the R9 system is the added level of safety. It would be virtually impossible to have an unintended stall in this airplane with the DFC 100. Uh, additionally, one of the things that advanced airplanes, uh, some of the Cirrus and Columbia and some of those uh, aircraft have had a problem with in the pilot population is integration of autopilot to the flight system. And the nice thing, and just as an example, the um, DFC-100 doesn't rely on um, a series or a specified series of inputs to get the autopilot working. You can just push the autopilot button on and it'll hold what you've got. And that's a real workload saver. You can figure out exactly what you need later, but you can turn the autopilot on right now. What does the DFC-100 bring to the mix that we have not seen before? I think it brings a real ease of use in the approach phase of flight, all the way from selecting an approach and transitioning and coupling an approach through the missed approach point. I understand you've also had a chance to spend a little bit of time with synthetic vision. What's your impression so far? All favorable. I think Avidyne's taken the time to get it right. The way that it's going to display threats and terrain is unique and special. I think the pilots will really truly uh, be impressed by the way impending threats, especially if you fly in the mountainous areas, are depicted and can take evasive action well ahead and well in advance of what they could with other systems. Is synthetic vision a parlor trick? I mean, we, we talk to a number of people. I mean, I've got my own particular opinions, and I can't wait. Some folks call it a parlor trick. Other folks see that as just one more piece of information that adds to a total picture of what's happening to a pilot in flight. What's your thoughts? I don't think anybody who flies in the CLAG in a mountainous environment on an approach to minimums with the airport runway clearly visible on their display minutes before they will see it visually, we'll call that a parlor trick. Trip, we thank you so much for your time. We wish you a safe trip home and thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. Enjoyed being here.